Hey everyone, whether you're just jumping into Anime Guardians or you're already a seasoned pro, we know you've probably been wondering, what's the current meta like? Well, you're in the right place because today we're diving deep into all the units in the game. We've tested them, ranked them, and put together the ultimate tier list so you'll know exactly who to pick when you're looking to dominate the battlefield. Stick around to see where your favorite units land and whether it's time to switch up your squad. In this video, we're covering everything from the absolute best units that are crushing it in the meta to the ones that, well, might need a little more love. We've got it all. Stats, abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, so you can make the best decision for your team. Whether you're aiming to climb the ranks or just trying to have fun, we've got the info you need. Let's get into it and see which units are worth your time and which ones might need a little tweaking. I'm quickly moving on to the video and I'm ranking units in Anime Guardians. Before we start, if you enjoy these types of tier list videos, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Enjoy watching! A very small portion of the audience is subscribed to the channel. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like these types of videos. Thanks. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Subaru and Nachi. Alright folks, let's get real for a second, we all love a good unit in Anime Guardians, but there are some that just don't quite cut it. You know the ones you pull, and you're like, eh, maybe next time. Well, today, we're diving into the D tier units, the ones that might just sit on the bench a little longer than you'd like. First up, we've got Subaru. Now, Subaru's got that single target DPS, and sure, he can attack fast, but let's be honest, his damage output is basically meh. It's like he's throwing punches, but it's the kind of damage that leaves you wondering if you should have just used someone else. His DPS really doesn't do him any favors, so you might want to think twice before adding him to your lineup. And then there's Nachi. Now Nachi's kind of like a long range Kilu with some extra range thrown in, which sounds great, right? The issue here is his cooldown is a bit longer, and his DPS takes a nosedive compared to Kilu. It's like he's trying to be a better version of Kilu, but ends up just being a slower, weaker one. If you've got him, well, maybe hold off on using him in those tougher battles, because he's definitely not packing enough punch to really make a difference. So, yeah, Subaru and Nachi are definitely the units you'll want to be cautious about. They're not terrible, but in the grand scheme of things, they just don't shine like some of the other units in the game. If you're looking for solid DPS or consistent performance, you might want to keep these guys on standby. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Mish, Rom, Emilian, Kifch, and Emilian, Say, Congo, Ko, and Kilu. Alright, buckle up, because today we're diving into the real underdogs of Anime Guardians. You know, the units that make you question if you've made a huge mistake summoning them, but hey, they're all you've got in the early game, right? Let's talk about C-tier units, those that you can't always count on, but hey, at least they can still get the job done in a pinch. First up, we've got Mish. Now, Mish might just be the bottom of the barrel when it comes to mythics, but for some reason, he's still a mythic. It's like having a broken tool in your garage that you're just too attached to throw away. Sure, he's worse than Rem in most aspects, but if he's all you've got, you're gonna make do. It's not like he'll carry your team to victory, but at least he might survive long enough to let someone else handle the heavy lifting. Speaking of Rem, let's talk about her. I don't know what's going on with the banners, but Rem just won't leave. Honestly, she's one of the worst mythics in Anime Guardians. Her AoE skill barely does anything. The range is meh, the damage is, well, underwhelming. If you're running with her, you might be in a tough spot, but you do what you gotta do until better units come your way. So yeah, Rem is here, and sadly, she might be stuck on your roster until you can replace her. Now, onto Emelian. She's not terrible, but let's be real, she's not exactly top tier either. Her ability to slow enemies is nice for some crowd control, and when you upgrade her, she goes full AoE. If you're a new player, she can be a solid choice to start with, but don't expect her to carry the team later in the game. Think of her as a stepping stone until you can snag something better. And then there's a Chongo, or Ichigo. This guy is an epic, and while he might not be the flashiest unit, he's one of the better C-tier picks. Full AoE with solid DPS? Yes, please. If you're looking for something to hold you over, Ichigo's got your back. Plus, he's one of the best starter units to grab in Anime Guardians, so if you're early in the game, he'll serve you well while you work your way up. Finally, let's talk about Kilu. Kilua's the best rare unit you can get in the early game, hands down. He's got high damage output with massive AoE once fully upgraded, and his ability comes with a low cooldown, making him super efficient in those first few rounds. He's not going to win any awards for being flashy, but if you're just starting out, 
Killua is definitely going to make your life a lot easier while you aim for the higher tier units. So there you have it. These C tier units in Anime Guardians aren't the greatest, but they're reliable enough to help you get through the early stages. Just remember, they're not long term solutions, but they'll do the job until you can pull something stronger. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Miwok, Susuna, Gogo, Fleeran, Beauty, Rudy, and Oso. Alright, so you've probably got your hands full with all the powerful units in Anime Guardians, but today we're talking about some solid picks that might not make you scream S tier, but can still pack a punch if you play your cards right. These units are in the B tier, not the absolute best, but definitely worth a spot in your lineup. Let's dive in. First up, we've got Mywalk. Yeah, you read that right, Mihawk. He might not seem like much at first glance, but don't sleep on him. What makes Mihawk special is his ability to hit flying enemies once he's fully upgraded, which is super handy if you're short on hill units. He's a low cost, low damage unit that can really save you in the early waves, helping you get through those tougher stages without breaking the bank. He's not the biggest damage dealer, but he's reliable, and sometimes that's all you need in a pinch. Next, let's talk about Susuna, or Sukuna for the OG fans. When fully upgraded, he doesn't just deal damage, he burns enemies with his attacks. Talk about adding some extra oomph to his punches. His base DPS is higher than Gojo's, which is pretty impressive, but there's a little catch here. He doesn't have an evolution yet, so rolling for him might not be the smartest move at the moment. Still, once he gets that Evo, he's going to be a beast, so maybe keep him on your radar for future updates. Speaking of Gojo, here's the man himself, Gogo. Yes, that Gojo. He's a solid round starter, and the best part is his full AoE attack. He's got a really low cost, which is great for getting your setup going without draining your resources too quickly. When fully upgraded, his damage is solid, he has great range, and his cooldown is super low. The fact that he's a hybrid unit that can also hit flying enemies is a nice bonus. The only downside, no evolution yet, which leaves some people questioning if it's worth investing in him right now. Now, let's chat about Fleeran, aka Freeran, the hill unit. She's got solid damage and the ability to hit flying enemies right off the bat, which makes her a pretty decent pick for the mid game. But honestly, with all the hybrid units that can do the same thing, she starts to feel a bit redundant. Still, if you're in need of a solid hill unit that doesn't break the bank, Fleeran can definitely do the job, though you might want to look into newer units if you're after something with a bit more firepower. Alright, moving on to Beauty. And no, this isn't just about looks, though she does pack some charm. Beauty is another one of those rare hill units in the game, and if you're struggling with flying enemies, she's got you covered. The issue? She's not exactly competing with the top tier units, and her abilities aren't as impressive when compared to what the higher tiers bring to the table. Still, if you need a dedicated flying enemy handler, Beauty is there for you. Just don't expect her to be your powerhouse. Last but not least, we've got Rudy, a hill unit who, well, can't hit flying enemies. Yeah, not the most useful trait for a hill unit, but hear me out. Rudy's stats are better than those of some of the lower rarity units, so he can still hold his own in certain situations. He's not a game changer by any means, but if you're in need of a reliable unit who can help fill out your team, Rudy's definitely a decent option. So, there you have it. These B tier units might not be the ones you're rushing to max out, but they've got their uses, especially if you're just starting out or if you need a cheap option to round out your team. Keep them in mind, and who knows, they might surprise you when you least expect it. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Satalan, Rimosu, Song, Ichongo Bankai, Aozort, Kafla, and Alon Phase 1. Alright, let's talk Satsayas. Uh, let's talk about some of the best A tier units in Anime Guardians. These aren't your S tier powerhouses, but they still pack a serious punch and are absolutely worth your attention if you want to build a solid team. First up, we have Satalan. Now, Satalan might not have an evolution just yet, which is a little bit of a bummer, but what she does have is a super high damage, low to low cooldown AoE attack. It's great for clearing mobs fast, and you'll find her useful early on, but her lack of an evolution does hold her back a little compared to other units. Still, if you're looking for reliable DPS, she's definitely got your back. Then there's Ramosu or Ramuru for those of you who love that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Ramuru is fantastic when it comes to dealing with shields because of his multi-hit attack, which is pretty much a must-have for tougher enemies. But, and here's the catch, like Satalan, Ramuru doesn't have an evolution yet. 
So, while he's solid in the early game, you might want to think twice about investing too heavily in him until we see what his evolution brings. Moving on to Song Jin Woo. Okay, if you don't know who he is, we might have a problem, but let's keep it short. High DPS summon unit, easy to understand, and he's awesome. What makes him stand out though is his evolution. Once he evolves, he's just on another level, his damage output skyrockets, and he becomes a must-have. Definitely one to keep an eye on during banners, because this guy is going places. Let's talk Ichongo Bankai, aka Bankai Ichigo. If you've ever played Anime Guardians, you'll know that Bankai Ichigo is a beast. He's like the upgraded version of Epic Ichigo. Both of his evolutions are amazing, and they really set him apart from the crowd. If you see him on the banner, don't hesitate to roll for him. You won't regret it. He's one of those mythic units that's totally worth the grind. Alright, now we're going to talk about Aozort, or better known as Aizen. He's another top tier non-evolution mythic that's still holding his ground in the meta. The reason Aizen shines so bright is his ability to stun enemies, which gives your other units more time to dish out damage. That stun is huge in both early and late game stages. Plus, both of his evolutions are solid, making him a reliable pick in almost any situation. Lastly, let's give it up for Kafla. This guy is pure chaos with his almost map-wide multi-hit AoE attack. Seriously, Kafla is a one-man army, capable of soloing entire game modes. His evolution is insane. We're talking game-changing levels of power here. The only downside? He can't target flying enemies, which is a bit of a bummer. But trust me, he's still amazing for most situations. And finally, we can't forget Alon Phase 1. alon has got that massive AoE attack, huge range, and burn effect that can cover pretty much the entire entire map in some stages. Plus, his evolution takes him to another level of power, so make sure you grab him if he's available on the banner. He's a priority for any player serious about their team's damage output. And that wraps up our A tier units. These guys aren't the absolute best, but they're close, and in the right hands, they can make a huge difference in your gameplay. So, if you've got any of these units or are thinking of rolling for them, they're definitely worth the investment. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Ikongo Vasto Lorde, Ikongo True Bankai, Alzort Lord Ark, Alzort Hollow Form, and Alon Demon Lord. Let's dive right into the absolute powerhouses in Anime Guardians right now. If you're looking for the best units that will literally carry you through the toughest battles, you've come to the right place. We're talking about the cream of the crop, the absolute S tier legends that will leave your enemies in the dust. These units are the ones you need to keep an eye on if you want to dominate. First up, let's talk about a Congo Vasto Lord. Now this guy isn't your typical damage dealer. Vasto Lord has some serious power when it comes to shredding through shields, and if you're facing those pesky shielded enemies, he's basically your best friend. Sure, he only has two attacks, which might not seem like a lot, but trust me, those EVO stats are what put him at the top of the tier list. If you've got him on your team, you're definitely in good hands. But wait, it gets even better with a Congo True Bankai. This version of a Congo is all about sheer damage output. If you're craving higher DPS, then True Bankai is where it's at. It may not handle shields quite as well as Vasto Lorde, but if you're lacking in raw damage, this is the guy to choose. He's like a glass cannon with an edge, and his power will absolutely melt through your enemies if you play your cards right. Moving on, let's talk about Aozort Lord Ark. Lord Aizen is a beast in the slow unit category. If you've been on the lookout for a slow hero who can also dish out some solid DPS, then Aozort is your guy. His hybrid nature gives him the flexibility to be both offensive and defensive, making him a perfect fit for any team. And if you need someone who can really bring down the tempo of the battle, Lord Aizen is definitely the top choice right now. Last but definitely not least, let's give it up for Aozort Holoform. This version of Aozort takes things to a whole new level. We're talking full AoE DPS, meaning he can wipe out a bunch of enemies at once with his insane power. Hollow Aizen is truly one of the best mythic units in Anime Guardians right now, and if you're lucky enough to have him, you're probably already experiencing just how unstoppable he is in battle. And finally, we've got Alon Demon Lord. If you're looking for high damage, low SPA, and multi-hit attacks look no further than Demon Lord Alon. He's an absolute damage machine, and the only real downside is his range. But honestly, with his insane power, that's a small price to pay. If you want a unit that hits hard and fast, Alon is definitely one of the strongest units you can get your hands on in the game. The units in this tier are, in order from top left to bottom right, Kafla Overpower, Sai, Sung Shadow Monarch, and Balm. Alright, if you're serious about dominating anime guardians, you're gonna want to know about these S-plus tier units that are taking the game by storm. 
Let's dive into the absolute best of the best, the ones you need in your roster if you want to flex on everyone else. First up, we've got Kafla Overpower. Now, Kafla is insane. Fully upgraded, this guy's got a map-wide AoE attack that hits multiple times. If you're dealing with shields, Kafla is your go-to. He doesn't just deal damage, he obliterates anything in his path. Right now, he's one of the most meta units in the game, and if you're not using him, you're missing out on some serious power. Then there's Sai. Or should I say Saitama? We all know Saitama's a beast, and even without an evolution, he's still top tier. This guy's full AoE, multi-hit, and the damage he dishes out is on another level. Every punch hits like a freight train, and if you want to wipe out waves of enemies without breaking a sweat, he's your guy. If you haven't gotten him yet, seriously, what are you waiting for? He should be at the top of your priority list. Next, we've got Song Shadow Monarch, and let me tell you, this guy is not your average SJW. This is like the regular version, but juiced up on some serious power. His summons? They're absolutely broken. Plus, he's got a full AoE with a super low cooldown, meaning you can spam those devastating attacks non-stop. The multi-hit damage he packs is enough to melt through even the toughest enemies. If you're looking for someone who can handle the crowd and deliver high-impact damage, Song is your answer. And last but definitely not least, we have Bulm. If you thought Bulma was already good, think again. Bulm is basically Bulma on steroids, and no, I'm not exaggerating like, she's hands down the best farm unit in the game. Need to rack up some serious points? Bulm's your ticket. Her abilities are perfect for farming, and she'll help you hit those high scores faster than you can say OP. So there you have it, the S plus tier units that are ruling anime guardians right now. If you want to take your gameplay to the next level, these are the characters you need. Trust me, once you get them on your team, you'll be unstoppable. The video ends here. See you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe.